Greetings gaming historians and welcome to Lord of Lore, where we break down the lore and history of our favorite video games and fantasies. And today, we're returning to the world of Amalore to discuss one of the most important parts of the game's world. We have done numerous videos covering different races, factions, and events, but what is the world of Amalore without the many magical lands that inhabit it? In this video, we will begin a three-part mini-series where I discuss the lore of Amalore's lands both in the game of Reckoning and beyond. And we will begin by exploring the western half of the Feylands, which include Dalantarth, Detir, and the Plains of Arathel. Without further ado, let's discuss! The first location we'll be discussing is the very first area players will explore upon emerging from the ruins of Alistar Tower, and that is the land of Dalantarth. While all of the Feylands are enchanted by all manner of spell and beast, Dalantarth is by far the most influenced by the Fey of life and rebirth. It was here that the god king Issa united the once wild fey clans and harnessed the power of summer, and thanks to the continued protection of the gardens of Issa, the house of ballads, and the world tree Nirulum, the fey races and magics continue to thrive. Unlike the other lands, Dalantarth has only recently been pioneered and settled by mortal races, including Almain from the west and a handful of gnomish projects. In fact, the current High King Tatarian, with an eagerness that defies his more cautious court fey, has opened the borders of Issa's gardens to many refugees and is eager to share his wisdom with them, even opening several embassies for mortal cities to learn about the fey and their ways. From the gardens, the summer fey continue to maintain the natural order of Dalantar such as seeding and watering magic trees, hunting monsters whose populations grow too large, and protecting fey artifacts. However, despite the seemingly unhampered prosperity of the land, both Tatarian and the World Tree Nirulim foresee a future that other Fey can hardly comprehend, and that is the end of fate. The second location we'll be discussing is the sun-baked wastelands of Detir. While the influence of the Fey is still very prominent in this land thanks to its many beasts and magical caves like Keralatha, the deserts of Detir are noticeably harsher than lands like Dalantarth or Arathel, and this can be seen in its population. Monsters and scattered giant camps abound, but save for the new city of Edessa, mortal settlements are far and few between. In fact, even a majority of the Fey that call the deserts home have moved underground or even faded away, particularly the House of Valor. This House of Summer Fey regularly battled to the death to celebrate life's fierce fight for survival. But when a mortal human known as Magnus slew the Fey champion and regularly attracted mortal crowds for mere sport and bloodshed, the former Fey members of the House of Valor scattered into obscurity. Even if you look into ancient records like those found in the Lore Stones, it seems that Detir was always a dry and parched land. According to the lore stones of the Hollowlands, the sun god Helios mercilessly beat the land with his light, cracking the earth and driving the animals underground. And even when the great Sina, a massive bird-like creature that emerged from the fey dimension of Ashara, tried to cool the land with the shade of her wings, an angry Helios allied himself with the fire god Vrakor to strike Sina with a fiery blast. It is highly hinted that the giant skeleton found in the center of the Hollowlands is all that remains of the noble Sina. Still, despite these hardships, the Fey continue to work together to support the harsh but unique nature of Detir, such as using mystical plants to maintain the soil and guarding Keralatha, an ancient cave that houses the crossing, keeping magical balance with the help of both summer and winter Fey. The final location we will be discussing are the beautiful plains of Arathale, and on a personal note, let me just start by saying this is probably my favorite location in the game. Beautiful plains of green and gold stretch underneath the gaze of shining stars, lonely cliffside castles, and cloudy mountain peaks. Despite its beauty, however, these lands have seen their fair shares of hardship. Firstly, due to its name and many ruins, it is safe to assume that these lands were once a centerpiece of the mystical Arathi, an ancient race of wise and powerful beings who helped the races of Amalur rise from the ashes of the deep gloam, only to mysteriously disappear centuries later. Like other areas in Amalur, the Fae settled to protect Arathel's nature and to guard over the magical Arathi artifacts, as both races revered fate and the mystical forces of Amalur. But unlike Dalantarth and Detir, where only a handful of Almain and Gnomish settlements exists, the Alfar have lived in the plains of Arathel for centuries, 
and as a result, a majority of the Summer Fae have been pushed out of their homelands, with only the Cradle of Summer remaining as the last major stronghold of Fae magics in Arathale. Here, the Alfar that would soon become the Dalkalfar made a pilgrimage from their homeland in Glen Suthain and established the city of Rathir, slowly growing to become the dominant mortal race in the Fae lands thanks to their advanced society and magic. One faction grew more powerful and ambitious than foreseen, and under the tyranny of the Empyrean queen, Ciara Sedanus, she used her advanced sorcery, likely acquired by drawing from Arathi magic, and waged war on the plains of Arathale. This war saw the rise and fall of many noble Dalkafar houses until three magical heroes, Eleanor Brea, Elodan Bloodgood, and Morris Torix, gathered a host of mages to overthrow her and imprison her beneath Rathir, forming the Scalia Arcana atop her prison. Thanks to the continued growth of Rathir and the Scalia Arcana, the Dalkafar continued to grow in magic and influence, but new hardships arose with the Crystal War. The Tuatha Dé An declared war on all mortals, and because the Dalkafar were the dominant mortal race in the Feylands, the people of Arathale took the brunt of the war, losing Melsen Shear and many of their riverside settlements to Tuatha attacks. Thankfully for the people of the plains of Arathale, the Fateless One would arise and would drive the Tuatha back to the eastern Feylands, from the decaying swamps of Cloricon to the crystalline wastes of Alabastra, which we will discuss in the next week's video. And that about does it for today's video. The lands of Amalur are so amazing and, in my opinion, superior to so many other fantasy RPG worlds, thanks not only to their vibrant visuals, but also thanks to their unique and rich lore. While the map of Amalur is huge, the lands of Dalantarth, Detir, and Arathale provide a perfect starting point for players exploring its world. What do you think of these lands? Are there any interesting points that I missed? What other locations should I explore in future videos? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and be sure to drop a like and subscribe so my channel can grow. Feel free to comment what you would like to see next, new videos regularly. God bless!